So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the loneliness of the first trimester and specifically talking about, you know, the fact that as when a woman gets pregnant, you don't really announce a pregnancy in that first trimester. You kind of wait the first 12 to 13 weeks to see how things go before after you can start publicly sharing that you're pregnant to more people. Sometimes you can choose to tell, you know, of course, close family members, close friends, your spouse, your significant other that you're pregnant, of course, but um, the larger crowd it takes a while before you share that to people and because they're health risk and you never know what could happen and so i wanted to talk about the loneliness in that season of life those first three months how that can be and why there's such a dilemma in not making pregnancy announcements like sharing both sides of it which i went through with my son so a little background about me um, my husband and I got married in 2020 and then we decided to wait a year of just us enjoying one another, exploring. We got married really quickly <laughs> from dating and then getting married and I shared that in a previous video of um, my husband and I, our love story. And so we decided let's wait a year of just enjoying our time, traveling, exploring, being spontaneous and be, being child free, even though we're super excited to have kids. And so we waited that year and then the following year in 2021, we decided we wanted to start trying and trusting God that he would bless us with a child. And so we got pregnant, well, I got pregnant, but it was a pregnancy for both of us. Um, I got pregnant fall of 2021 and then we had our son in summer of 2022 he's such a blessing we love him so much and we're so blessed to have him and so with respect to my pregnancy the first thing about that the first reason why there's such a dilemma with making pregnancy announcement is that we were trying and then when we finally got pregnant and it was a healthy pregnancy, um, viable pregnancy, we're excited. And of course we wanna share, but we can't share because you have to wait. You know, there are so many risks, sadly, that could be a loss. And that's something we had experienced previously. And so having our son was our second pregnancy. Our first pregnancy ended up in a loss. We got pregnant and unfortunately we had an early loss, which um, can also be termed as a chemical pregnancy. And so with that first pregnancy, we were so excited. It's our first time, we're first time parents. And so we told quite a few friends of ours and family. And then we realized that we had the loss. And so it was really difficult to move on, but we mourned it, we um, dealt with it. And so then we decided we wanna keep trying again. And so we tried a couple cycles later, we were able to get pregnant and so that was wonderful and so having been through that loss previously we were so excited to share again however we had that fear that what if something happens again you know um something like bleeding while pregnant that is very common in early pregnancy and so for me a couple of times i had that in first trimester and i was really terrified like oh no could this be happening again you know but that's very normal and my OB let me know that it was a very normal thing that happens and just to keep him up to date on those things. And so the first thing that makes it really difficult in terms of the dilemma of that is because you're excited that you're finally pregnant and you know, you're carrying this child, but then you can't share. So it's hard because you want to celebrate, but also you have this fear in you that what if I share? And I remember one of the hardest things of that first loss was it was difficult to lose. I'm not trying to minimize that. However, another thing that was really difficult about that was having to tell people, oh no, we're no longer pregnant. It was so heartbreaking. I struggled a lot with that. My husband struggled a lot with that. You know, having to kind of remember, oh, who did we share this with? Who knows right now? And we have to go back now and say, hey, we're not pregnant anymore, we had a loss. And that was really devastating to have to go through that. And so we know we did not wanna go through that again. And so it was, you know, with our second pregnancy with our son, it was just, okay, well, we wanna celebrate really badly, but we can't right now, we have to hold this in 
for 12 weeks, uh, 12 to 13 weeks, and just hold on to make sure this becomes a viable pregnancy and you know things are looking better. And every doctor's appointment I had, especially in that first trimester, my doctor always gave me the percentage of you know viability of the pregnancy and the percentage with respect to having a miscarriage or anything, which I appreciated because of course he knew my history with the previous pregnancy. And so just to kind of affirm and reassure us, he would share that kind of information with us and we're completely fine and comfortable with that. And so that's one of the things that makes it such a dilemma in that first trimester. And it's such a lonely time because it's like, it's really just you and your spouse that can really celebrate and enjoy this and depending on how much you want to share with other people if you even want to share with other people and so it can be such a lonely time and the second part of that too i'd say the second reason why it's such a dilemma is because you're told do not share if in case there is a loss and so what sucked is because if there is a loss you do want support you want someone to support you and so it's really hard because you you you're scared that there could be loss but if in case there is loss you want support because for us i think one of the blessings of that first time of us sharing with a few close friends is because when we went through that loss you know several friends were there for us and that's when several friends and family members were sharing I've been there before they share their story to encourage us to love on us and so in a way we were thankful we shared because I remember when I went through that loss that Friday one of my good friends she came over came over with flowers and she hung out with me in that moment when it happened I you know my husband had to go to work he couldn't call out at the time and so he had to go to work and you know I was like it's totally fine you can go it's fine you know and I uh, understood that he had to leave and you know he was struggling I was struggling but and you know because for me I can deal with sadness by myself and stuff and so um, I was totally fine with being by myself but also when she came over I needed that and I didn't know I needed that because I was totally just gonna do it on my own, you know? And so her just being there with me, we talked a little bit about it, but it was just us hanging out. It meant so much to me that she did that. And even if she wouldn't have come and it was have been my, myself, I'm sure I'd have been okay, but it meant so much to me. And so going back to, it's so difficult because you shouldn't share if in case there is loss, but if you do share, you can get to have people who will be there with you and kind of love on you during the time that you're going through that loss. So it's such a dilemma with like sharing that because of course when we got pregnant the second time, we were so hush hush about it because of what happened the first time. And so if God forbid we would have gone through a loss again, we really would have been on our own this time around because we were so nervous, you know, to share. And so that makes it such a dilemma as well, you know? And also when you are, the third thing is too, that the dilemma about it is because when you're pregnant, there are so many things going on with your body, especially if it's your first pregnancy. And this was my first pregnancy. A lot of things I didn't understand going on. And for me, I always tell people, I know pregnancy is not an illness or anything, but for me, being pregnant is the sickest I've ever been because I've always been a pretty healthy person. I had a lot of health issues as a baby, as a toddler, but as a child, as a preteen, teenager, as an adult, I've been pretty healthy, praise God to that. But, um, and so being pregnant was probably the sickest I've ever been. And so there were so many things going on with my body that I did not understand. And so it was really nice to have family and friends who kind of walked me through it. You know, we had a select few of folks whom we shared with prior to the 12 weeks. And so, of course, we shared with our parents prior to the 10, um, 12 weeks and then a few close friends. But it was really nice because they could kind of give me some tips on what to do when I'm struggling with certain things. You know, one of my dear friends, you know, was struggling one day and she went to the grocery store and got two full bags of groceries and just came over with stuff. It was like, when I was pregnant, I remember this helping me or this helping someone else or this. And that was really, really nice you know of her to do that which is actually also the same friend who came over to spend time with me when i went through that loss coincidentally and so it's so hard because it's like you're struggling 
I remember being at work and I'm a mess. I am like dying inside, but I have to pretend I'm okay. Like nothing's going on. Everything is fine. And that's what sucks too, because it's like you have to put on this persona all as well, but, and not really ask for help or get help because you're supposed to keep it a secret, you know? And for me, actually being a Sierra Leonean, being a Sierra Leonean American, I am, I was very Sierra Leonean about certain things. So I never announced my pregnancy on social media throughout the entire duration. And only after I had given birth to my son, we had our healthy boy, that's when I shared online on social media that we were pregnant and oh, here we have a baby by the way, because it's a superstition in Sierra Leone. You don't really talk about pregnancy and all that stuff. And so, and I know several other cultures are that way. And so I chose not to even share online at all with my pregnancy. And so, but, and that's even taking a step further, but usually I think in the United States and many other places, it's safe to share after that first trimester. And so those are the three things that make it really difficult to not share um, when it comes to that first trimester. There's a lot of loneliness in it because like the first thing is you wanna celebrate, but you can't really celebrate out loud. It's just you and your spouse and um, your close friends and family that you may have shared with. And then the second thing is that if there really is a loss or complications or something like that, you you don't have someone to be there for you outside of your spouse, your significant other. You don't have someone or family mem close family members or friends. You don't have many people who can be there for you and love on you and just tell you it's okay or I've been there before, I've been through this before. And that takes me to my fourth point, honestly, is an additional point is that when you don't share people don't know what you've been through because for me for many years i thought pregnancy came so easily to all of fam my family members and friends and it just came so easily that no one ever went through a miscarriage they conceived from just hands touching and it was just so easy and didn't know much about you know all those things and then after going through a loss or even trying that's when friends started opening up yes it took us many cycles to get pregnant or here certain things we had to do and all that stuff to help us get to where we were to be able to conceive and have a healthy baby and so it's it's crazy because we should talk about it but there's such a taboo about these things because like especially me being african you know miscarriages are not things people talk about much but having gone through that loss then it's like all these other family members are opening up to me now i went through it as well i had difficulty conceiving um you know trying to conceive was such a hard time but i really wish i knew this because then it's you know if you don't know these things you start thinking what's wrong with me why am i not getting pregnant what's wrong with me why am i having such loss when this aunt has nine kids she may have nine kids but she may have also lost five and so these are things, that's why I think it's such a dilemma of not sharing and not talking, especially in that first trimester or even when you're trying to conceive because there's so many parts to it. Because, you know, things like these, you know, having been through the loss, I was able to really form a special bond like with my stepmom because she went through a very, very, very similar situation as I did. You know, having shared that and that was comforting to hear that or some of my other friends who shared their losses as well. You know, it's sad because it's we kind of bonded over the trauma, over that loss, but it was very empowering to know that you're okay, there's nothing wrong with you when you're going through these things. And so it's it's a very joyous time, but also can be very, very lonely and not talking and such a dilemma because you want to announce you're excited to share, but then you think about all these precautions you have to take.